Welcome to the Tom Owens Personal Massage Method video. For the next 40 minutes, join Tom, the inventor of the body cushion, as he takes you through a progression of applications that he developed from years of work in his private practice. This video is intended to take you step by step through applying a full body massage using the body cushion. What you see that's different here is what we recommend using the body cushion is a table extension and this extension extends beyond the end of the table, which allows placement for the face support and the crescent. In starting the massage, a couple of considerations first. You'll see I'm using a top blanket. I like to keep my client nice and warm. In uh, settling the client in and getting on the table, I like to start the client face down. That allows them to protect their vulnerable side, and most of my clients have found when they come to me for treatment they're talking about excessive tension in the areas of the upper back, neck, and shoulders and the low back. And starting them out face down allows me to go to these areas first and gives me time later in the massage to attend to those areas as well later on. So after my client is on the table, after my guest settles in, I want to go in and make sure that they're positioned properly on the body cushion. I reach in at the head end here at the clavicle and make sure the clavicle is supported at the head end of the chest support so that their upper torso is supported in just the right way. The other reference that I've pretty well guesstimated before my guest gets on the body cushion is the location of the anterior superior iliac spine. That's just about the belt line and that's supported at the highest elevation of support of the pelvic support. This is going to optimize the positioning for the pelvis relative to the ribs so that we're decompressing the lumbar spine. So now I'm just using these four pieces in this phase of the massage and I'm going to move around my client's body and just make sure that they're positioned appropriately. Make sure that the tibia is along the upper supporting surface of the leg support and kind of nestle, get her nestled in here. And in the process of getting her nestled in, I'm just drawing out that first level of tension kind of tracing the neural pathways, the posterior aspect of the thighs and the legs. And then I'm just gonna go right up her spine and just kind of give her a little jostling motion at the shoulders to help her get nestled in. I ask at this point a couple of pertinent questions relative to comfort. Danielle, do you feel any discomfort on your face at all? Okay, I wanna point out that there's plenty of airflow under the base and that's going to allow you to breathe freely and easily and as the massage progresses I'll be careful not to obstruct that airflow. What I think about starting a massage is integrating the whole body and so my mid integration point I think of is L5 and that gives me a place to begin, a place to come back to and a place to integrate the lower body with the upper body. So that's as I think about it the connecting point. Now there are various ways of working with the body cushion relative to table height. I myself have come to a way of working with the body cushion that allows the table to be a little bit higher than you normally might have the table if you're working uh, without the body cushion. And what allows me to work it with a higher table height is that the body is presented differently. And now what I'm doing is just tracing along the troughs either side of the spinous processes. Danielle, I'm going to have you start taking some nice deep abdominal breaths. And those deep abdominal breaths are very, very easy on the body cushion. Deep diaphragmatic breathing is one of the joys of receiving massage on this positioning tool. It so enhances the comfort of the guest and allows that exquisite level of experience while receiving massage. So now I'm applying the lubricant, I'm moving around her body in a way that I'm beginning to trace up the spine, all of those neural innervations of the spine, right up in the neck. Oh, how we want to work that neck, work it thoroughly. It's so available to us and we all need that relief there. Cervical spine, the associated musculature. 
Now, Danielle, I'm just going to undo your hair if you don't mind. And that'll give me the ability to go ahead and work your hair and your scalp. Because that's such an important part of the, the uh, massage treatment. Now, as I work, one thing I'm conscious of is my body posture. And I want to make sure that I'm not putting undue strain on my back. I want to make sure that I'm not putting undue strain on my wrists and fingers. And so any advantage I can have to eliminate any forces, pressure, I want to make sure that I'm favoring those approaches that make it very, very easy for me. Deep, deep breaths. Just breathe in. And now I'm going to be basically applying my weight to Daniel's posterior aspect here, either side of the spinous processes. Now there's no strain on my back when I'm doing this. And as I work my way back up, I'm transferring the weight from my lower extremities through my hands to her back. And this makes it very, very easy for me. One way to gain some elevation if you're working with a table that's not adjustable is to use a little platform. You can use a platform or a stool. During those times, you may wish to have the elevation to apply more of your body weight to your subject's back. And so, in this case, I have a stationary table, and I'm just going to pull out a little elevating platform here underneath my table that allows me enough surface to kind of move around a little bit. And so again, down to L5, and I'm just going to apply my knuckles either side of her spine. And again, I'm thinking about not putting pressure on my low back so that when I apply this force, I'm using the weight of my body effectively, so my arms straight. In this case, I'm using my knuckles and working up Daniel's back. I'm using my palms, the heels of my hand but I'm not holding myself over her body. I'm just using my body weight. I'm nice and relaxed in the lower back and I'm making it very, very easy for me. So Danielle, just take a nice deep breath again. And on the exhalation, we'll just move right up her spine and we'll notice when she stops breathing, another deep breath. Now, if you have a high-low table, another deep breath. It makes it very easy because you can determine when you want to work lower, when you want to work higher, okay? Now that's about the only time I need that additional height. Otherwise, I'm going to get down in a lower stance. In this case, cross-stroking the paraspinalis, the long muscles of Danielle's back. I want to make sure I'm not using too much lubricant as I work so that I get plenty of drag. If I get enough drag and friction, the effect is much deeper than if I use a lot of lubricant. So L5, I've worked up the spine. You've noticed how I'm supporting myself at the thighs here. I'm not really bending over with a lot of force on my low back, I'm kind of leaning against the table. And I'm just encircling the shoulder joint, kind of tracing up into the scapular fossa in the area of infraspinatus, teres minor, the suprascapular fossa, and then I'm going up into upper trap. So much an advantage having the arms forward, shortening the upper trapezius, okay? So we can grasp the muscle and work it very effectively. Also levator scapula, the levator, rhomboidus minor. I'm just going to move around the other side and 